Ganyan is once again rank one on the Korean server, but he's also rank two. He achieved this by being an absolute must of quadrant clearing and sequencing. He then uses it to sync up with his other strategy that we will also cover in this video. And the enemy jungle becomes a puppet on the string. And even if he makes mistakes, he's easily able to offset them. We're going to look at both his Nidalee and Viego games to see what pros and cons this can deliver for your own play style and how you can use it to reach your rank goals by the end of season 12. Okay, and this should be a little bit of a quicker video. You'll see the runes plus the first clear that he's going for on your screen. Yes, we always look for that full clear in Nidalee, or at least a red sort of raptors grump into some sort of invade action, ganking action. But what Canyons enjoy doing in both his rank 1 and rank 2 climb, and that's why we're here, is cutting that full clear short for tempo advantage. Now, in my Zada GG guides, I always put, you know, a 5 camp clear for even full clearing junctions to say, if you want tempo advantage, double scuttle, or potentially second rotation counter ganks, we'll look at that in the Viego example explicitly, then a 5 camp can do wonders. Now, in this one, I'm going to show you something very different, because normally we're used to seeing Canyon, you know, smurf all of the enemies, but look at this. We are going for an early dive, all right? Our lanes haven't quite reached the position to actually help us here. We're going to go all in on this, and, you know, I'm not to spoil anything, uh, but we die. <laughs> we die. So I've done this as well on Mundo lately. Sometimes I just run into a lane and I'm like, yes, I come. And then I die and give double buffs to the bottom lane. This doesn't mean the end of the game for you. Okay. That's the most important thing. What does this mean for a jungler? And this is what Kenny is very good at. Even if he makes a mechanical misplay, even if he makes a mistake on this climb, he's still able to find ways to win and carry the game or at least you know, satisfy the win condition. Right now, typically here in these situations, we would go, okay, look, what about this top scuttle? Uh, what about this bottom scuttle? But we know the Wukong cleared all the way up. We most likely know he's taking this plus this, especially if he hasn't shown. And our Grump isn't going to be out, you know, until 420. So what we can do here, and we can skip those Krugs, don't do them, move on to the bottom lane, get those doubles back off of the Yumi, especially since our bottom lane is low, the wave is thinned out here, and we can easily, knowing that they have no sums, get those kills back. And that's exactly the kind of correction you need to do in a lane where you make a boo-boo. Okay, so if you make a mistake in your lane, and sadly we see the Wukong here obviously hasn't based yet 28 CS, which means full clear plus scuttle, means we can probably sneak this away if we have a flash, to be honest with you. Um, unless, of course, they rotate. So you want to be very cautious here. Yep, we smite snack that away. Very nice. Trapping the Katarina. She's going to jump to us, chuck a dagger, we'll miss a spear. We're going to try and kill her. Ignite goes through. We get the kill for the Akshan. Auto attack, auto attack, swapping forms, swapping forms. Decide whether or not in this moment we can see this fight through. And if you cannot, leave. Now watch this fluidity, right? Spear chuck over the wall. <laughs> he's no, He knows he's going to leave the fight. He knows he can chuck a spear smite and start farming his Krugs. It's quite funny how smooth that was from him. And that's why he has a Nidalee skin, I mean, to be honest with you. So looking for these early actions early is great. And if they all work out for you, exquisite. But sometimes they don't. Sometimes you make a mistake, sometimes you die. Don't always focus on yourself in terms of, well, sorry guys, I'm off. Back to my, my grump and my walls, maybe topside, and I'm going to leave you alone. Repeat, fix the mistake. Now, from here, we can go straight to the blue side again. We have our tier 2 walls. We've got tier 2 grump. We're going to snack that up. Basically, sequence up and then cut in and look, top or mid. He's choosing to go for the mid lane here, okay? Katarina's always have to go. There's no CC though. And she can dodge a spear. Chucks a dagger. Leap in. Try to get kills. Nothing. That's okay. Good, valuable attempt at pressure. And that's the thing I want to really drive home here. Cutting the map is so crucial and something he does so damn well in every champion he plays, but ex especially on Nidalee, and especially on all of the champions he plays. Now we see the Wukong, so we're reactively Perth. You see how quick and easy it is for him to play from the jungle. He just sees everything, right? He kind of knows it's coming, so he's always looking for the camp Then the next pressure point. Using vision here against the Wukong, huge. All right, um, Akshan, that's... That's not how you want to use your ult, buddy. <laughs> That's not it. Pike's been roaming. So what we'll do is instead of doing um, sort of like a chase down of the Wukong here, we'll pull the camp out. He's going to try and snack this away. We do have smite. And then we can try impact bottom lane again with the prior here. Okay, we get it. And now we're going to look, right? We're in a bit of a sandwich situation, so be very cautious here. But the biggest thing about Kenny is he recognizes these things. Whether he chooses to act on them is separate. Sometimes he'll just force a fight and try and mechanically outplay it and die. He is the quintessential limit tester, but he does it with good mechanics and good decision making. It's not a guy just running at it. This is something that I've really enjoyed doing myself lately as well. And of course, remember, Canyon is a big inspiration for a lot of the strategies that I've made videos on. What you do here is you force a bit of a misdirect by taking this and recognizing nothing's here. You know the Wukong is either going to reset and go topside or just move to the top side for the RNG scud and such things. This means that what you can do is just loop back and take a very free dragon. Now, I've been doing it on Mundo, 
but on many or any meta junglers, you should be able to do this because there's no reason for the enemy jungler to hang around. When his bot lane's gone back to base, he has no camps, he cannot take the dragon. That dragon recognition is crucial and huge for your ability to elevate the game state. And that's, a, some, that's something he does extremely well here. So he pings this away, says, okay, look, Wuka must be top side here. You see those pings? You see this here? Don't do that just yet. I'm going to do my blue side quadrant again. Very heavy on the quadrant clearing at the moment, not the full sequencing. He will full sequence if he has to, but he's, he's always looking to finish a quadrant and look for something, you know? Look for something, finish the quadrant, look for something again. There's never a, a stagnant sort of AFK farming perspective. Wukong goes over the wall here. We see him. We're going to use a map mobility, map scaling, scanning, getting the full 10 second duration, using our prior here to try to get on onto the Wukong. We're going to use our spear jump onto the uh, Herald to gap close. Now we're going to kite back. All right, we're going to kite back here because of course we have the Yone showing up with the Wukong. Our Akshan is rotating over as well as the Katarina. The Yumi has shown up as well. So we need to recognize, look, let's leave just like earlier. You're not going to win the fight. Don't die needlessly. Look for a re-entry point, okay? Let the auction poke. Let him poke. Keep going. That's good. You've got the heals as well for attack speed buff. There you go. You see? That in and out gameplay is what he's very good at as well. All right? Try force the fight, but if you're very clearly going to lose it and you know, okay, look, uh, <laughs> a little bit too risky for me, pull back. Then go back in, you know, once they get distracted. And now here we take the objective. We see the chase down. We see some camps. We know that the, the monkey was low. Um, can I take some of your camps? So translate that into uh, pressure somewhere else on the map. And you can see here, he's 0-1-3, but that's still 60% KP. He's prevented the Wukong from doing much of anything. And look at how he lives in the jungle here. This is so strong. Something he's always done very well. Yumi gives away the location of the monkey, the alpha. Hello? Chucks a spear. That's a dead dude. Nice spear. You miss 100% of the spears you don't take. Katarina goes in, but I think it's a little too late for that, sweetheart. And uh, our uh, ADC has moved on over as well. Pure map control, right? It's not just about, you know, looking for those tempo advantages and then kind of resigning yourself to full clearing. It's about farming while reconciling what's happening on the map with what you really want to do while denying the enemy jungler and still getting objectives. And you can see that 20 CS lead now, higher KP, enemy jungler couldn't really do anything and really pushing always, pushing them out of their zone. Let's look at the Viego game. And much like the Nidalee video, we've gone on down, we've done a five camp clear, we were spotted once more, you see that we'll die. And instead of looking straight up for the six camp, we can have a look and see, is there something we can do on the bottom lane? Is there some sort of activity that can be rewarded, that I can get before I do the Krugs? And that's most crucial. Now, this is a downside here of not having the scanner. If you want to make this play and you miss that this is warded, you have to have a scanner. So I'm showing you very human mistakes here by Canyon in both of these videos. Dying level one, oh sorry, level three in the bottle main here, but also sitting on a ward, recognizing, oh good look, it's probably warded, I'm just gonna go up and take the scuttle. Now, you would have seen the Nocturne, do a full clear, take the top scuttle. Very damn obvious. What Canyon can do here is know that the Nocturne's gonna reset and try and get this 417, 418 grump, right? But that will give him time to come to the bottle main first. So this clear allows you to look for a gank, get a scuttle, shadow, hit this in ward if you have it, which you probably could have and should have done, and then move back down to your Krugs and then shadow a lane gank here for the potential arrival of that Nocturne, predicting that he's going to show, right? You see this? This is why that ward was placed. This is why we're here. So if he does show, we can react. Now, will Nocturne stay? Or will Nocturne go to his grub? That's, that's, that's essentially the question here. Now, the center hits the root. We have a support singe versus a support uh, Lee Sin. Well, it's not really support Lee Sin, but he goes in thinking the Viego must have 100% left the situation, which he has not. We're still here. And that's the benefit of this particular clear. It allows you to fall back and stay in the zone should another juggler be predictable and should your bot lane disrespect this possibility. Once Nocturne shows up here and does this and goes up, Canyon pings this. You see on the minimap here? He pings that the Nocturne's going to be doing this and going up. Excellent vision here by the Galio. All right, this is a faker kind of plays with the Galio. Now we know we can go to the top side here and shadow where he is. Top laner moves on down to hit the plant. So now Kenny knows top lane has kind of left the situation. Maybe they've warded my camps and so on. I do need to be cautious about being counter jungled and seen. We chuck out the W onto the Grump to pull it out. So we can start attacking it as soon as possible. We scan to see, aha, wards. Our bot lane dies again anyway, because that's just, oh, wait, 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 wait. Gaming, no, no, no gaming. We clear the ward here. As Soon as you see a top laner disappear, go down for 20 seconds and go back up. Please know that they've been in your house with their shoes on, full of mud, clear it up, and then carry on going. So Canyon is looking at these five chem tempo control clears early for early bot lane actions, bot lane meta, and then trying to force the enemy jungler 
into a position where he can always get a free dragon, right? Because now we know. Bot lane here is going to be resetting. Challenger icons for everybody. Varus is coming back into lane level 3. And basically you have the Sins roaming, okay? So you know that the Nocturne should, in theory, go back to base down to the next rotation Grom. But because this will be a third sequence, the Grom to Krog sequence that the Nocturne just did will leave him quite a lot of time to play with before that Grom spawns again. And that's something that you got to track, okay? That dead time, what is a jungler going to do? Most of the time, if they reset, they're going to try getting bottom lane. Because his bottom lane reset, all right, we know that there's an RNG scuttle up here. He could easily look to wait for this. He could also just look to gank the fact that the rumble is in the lane and has no sums. The Singed has randomly, or not, maybe not so randomly in Challenger, roamed top lane to kind of compensate for this. But what does that mean? Just like in the Nidalee game, we have passed and outpassed him, so we get a free dragon. Now, what happens here is outside of our control. Let's have a look. Okay, right? We're doing our business. We're just keeping our eyes on this. All right, Singed Gaming, Nocturne Gaming, Minion Wave Tanking, and do we do the good work? Galio ults from the mid lane, but it doesn't matter. Singed falls. Can we at least kill the Akali? Yes, we can. And Jungler says, thanks for your objective. Don't feel like you have to move yourself to the situation. You know, take what you can. And obviously their bot lane is going to show up and it's going to be 2v1. So we could look to straight up impact this, knowing that they're going to try and take advantage of this. But, um... This happens, and as a jungler, you know, nothing we can do. Nocturne then decides to go back in after getting six from that scuttle, and we're going to get some kills on the top lane. Whoop. Yep, he gets a kill. What is Kenny doing about this? I don't really care, because I've been making the right plays and the right reads, and that's just the fiesta on the map. Don't let it distract you. Don't feel the need, all right, to try and put up the fires across the map, and that's the, the restraint here that I'm trying to show you. The Nidalee was much more proactive in shattering and removing the enemy jungler, now the enemy jungler is having that pressure. Our laners are not kind of doing what we want, but we mustn't let it stop us from doing what we need to do to win the game. So we're going to go up here and do the wolves. We're going to do the blue. We're going to do the gromp. Okay, just like the last game, we do our quadrant. And then can we look for another objective? That's the crucial thing here. Can we look for another objective uh, and pull it before the, the Nocturne shows up? If we feel like there's a bit of a, a, a play we can look to make beforehand, please do that because you want this to be free. But here again, scan is open, no wards. Nocturne's going to show up on the top here. We don't know this, but the ult goes through. You can kind of predict a dude's sequence all the way up and done it again. So let's rotate to this scenario. And that's what Kenny was looking for here. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, we kill him. That's what Kenny was looking for. Where's the Nocturne? He's going to pull the ult again soon. Something's up. He hasn't shown. So he's basically controlling the rivers, patrolling the rivers a little bit with downtime that he has and looking for the opening to take the objective, which of course he will. Then we take the RNG scuttle. Then we go back to base again. And now what? Back to the bottom side, where we have Red Quadrant available and a dragon that's going to be spawning. So we have the Herald here and we can try and use it while clearing our Quadrant. So the biggest thing again, Quadrant clearing from Canyon. Clear the Quadrant, look for a play. Control the Rivers, shadow the enemy jungler, track the enemy jungler, okay? And now again, the classic, I love this, looking for lane ganks in the bottom lane. People don't look for lane ganks enough, especially when it's watered a lot here. Uh, we can't use our scanner. Singe goes in here. We use the approach to play off of that. We do get kicked out, but it doesn't matter. We get the assist. We become the least sin. And now, of course, we could look to just absolutely slap this Herald down for some plate monies. Which, you know, you're not going to kill the turret necessarily, but Nocturne does show up here. Careful, 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 careful. But again, now the dragon has spawned. Do we want to coin flip and do this right now? No, because people need to go back to base. Nocturne's ulting. All right, he's gonna, probably going to look to do this here. Will he get anything from it? No, but he does show up. So he was out of range. But this overcommit again, Viego controlling the rivers. So this is definitely not a high CSPM style like the Nidalee, but he is controlling the rivers and not letting the Nocturne really go in there. And he gets to trap here because he creates a bit of like a movement zone for his mid laner to travel down. Like sitting on the edge here with his cape out. <laughs> I mean, those guys are never going to trust a Viego again. They, <laughs> they, they just been sitting in his E the whole game. Galio ults through. Varus hits a Q. We see the Nocturne trying to collapse again. The Nocturne is letting Canyon. there we go, that's a kill. Kraken Slayer, baby, it's a good item. It's very strong, huge. Avoid the Q from the Lee Sin with uh, your brain. Yeah, loop back, Q misses, and off we go. 301, and now we can do another objective. So both videos, what you're seeing is objective control, river control, quadrant control, but no full sequencing. And the enemy jungler is getting a bit desperate in both games, trying to match his pressure, trying to predict what he's gonna do next. And all he's doing is hovering, 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 and then clearing a quadrant, taking an objective, going back to base and doing it again. So hopefully you can get a sense of, you know, you don't have to narcissistically full clear and go, nothing to do. 
you can always look to clear your quadrants and control the rivers. And I think when you're a Nidley or a Graves, obviously that allows you then to move into their jungle as well. But hopefully this provides you just a little bit of the, the strategies and the concepts that he used to get rank one and rank two in Korea. And uh, obviously mechanical prowess and, and skill is important, but I have covered a lot of vision tips as you'll see on your screen now. Go watch that video if you want to understand how to move around the map. And obviously if you are getting invaded like Canyon does against the uh, Wukong in this video, you can see on this video how to deal with that and what you need to do in order to go over it. And those videos are linked in the boxes on your screen.